brutally realistic and devastating. Hard Mountain Clay is a tale of two siblings alone in the world. They have a mother zoned out from her heroin addiction and her abusive live-in friend with benefits. Ben and Macy must prepare themselves daily for the unexpected. What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jay. This is The World According to Moi. Uh, thank you very much for stopping by. I really appreciate it. Today we're going to talk about Hard Mountain Clay. This is by C.W. Blackwell. Now C.W. was kind enough to stop by Paper Cuts and hang out with uh, Brad and myself last week, about a week back, yeah, and we chatted about this brand new book here, uh, the story behind it, the setting, how C.W. got hooked up with Shotgun Honey, uh, about his love for songbirds and stray dogs from Megan Lucas, which of course you guys know Brad and I are both huge fans of that book. And we did a little bit of the classic rock trivia that made Brad very uncomfortable, which was the whole purpose of that. Win. <laughs> now I will tell you up front, this is a very harsh and honest book. And what I mean by that is, it's very realistic. Uh, you may actually hear a story like this happen in real life. If you watch the news or read the news online, however you get your news, this could actually happen in real life. And it kind of hits close to home once you realize that. Immediately you feel for the siblings. You feel for Ben and Macy and the, the hardships that they face every day. You have a mother who's basically lost her soul to drugs, possibly to just dull her pain, you know, and you have this dirty, nasty, shady, live-in boyfriend. And at this point, I wouldn't even call him a boyfriend. You know, he's just someone there that someone's a, that's around for convenience. And there's a handful of other characters sprinkled throughout. Since they are involved with Lou, the, the live-in, you know they are just bad news. And this story just takes place in this little mountain town, in this little uh, rural town that's nestled deep within the fog of the mountains. And it could very well be a very beautiful place if it wasn't for all of the crooked, nasty, shady people in town that causes this black cloud just to hang over. Now, it's when the kids witness a tragic event, or at least the, the covering up of a tragic event, their already rough life becomes more complicated. It sort of becomes a story of survival, survival for the kids, how to continue living in this situation, and really for how long. Well, let's talk about the storytelling in this book for a second, because it's got this very this very laid back, compassionate feel to it. And it kind of pulls you in, grabs you by the wrist, and it, it directs you which way to go. It, it leads you on the path it wants to take you. Not necessarily the correct path, but the path the book wants to take you. Remember, the book is telling the story here. And it's got such great flow to it. It's got a proper length for you to just breeze through one evening or a Sunday afternoon because you know football season is over. What else are you going to do on Sundays? There are also these points throughout the book where it becomes somewhat of a fight or flight situation with hard decisions needing to be made. And that's where a lot of the empathy comes from. You see these two young kids having to make these decisions, these kind of decisions that no kid should have to make. Hard mountain clay, it strikes hard, and when it strikes, it hits bone. It brings the, uh, the kind of raw grittiness that, that makes your teeth hurt, but it doesn't prevent you from wanting to see what happens next. You know, as I was making my way through this, there was a song that kept popping in my head, Dissident from Pearl Jam. There's a line that Eddie Vedder sings, escape is never the safest path, and that rings very true for this book. Uh, this is going to have sweat forming over your brow as you as you really get into the intense moments leading up to the finale. And that's kind of where us, the reader, we have been pulling for Ben and Macy from the get-go. But as we get closer to the finale, you know, we start questioning ourselves. If they were to win, if they were to survive this situation, what would that consist of? Would it be a real win? Or is winning losing in this situation? You know, 
if it were to happen, would it be too late? Or would the merciless living conditions that Ben and Macy have experienced already laid the foundation for them to repeat it, for them to follow suit? A lot of questions you may ask yourself as you're reading this. It's Hard Mountain Clay from C.W. Blackwell. You get this directly from Shotgun Honey. And I'll have a link somewhere, if I remember to put it on here, the episode of Paper Cuts, where C.W. Blackwell hung out with Brad and myself. And we, we got pretty intense with this. And then after, by the way, in, in that episode, after the Classic Rock Trivia, we just had this long conversation about uh, serial killers. <laughs> so that's a bonus for you. And we talked about some Netflix shows and, and upcoming books from C.W. Blackwell, things you don't want to miss. That uh, was a pretty cool damn episode, I tell you. So I'll try to link that somewhere if I, if I remember how to do that. But yeah, check this out. Definitely highly suggest it. Highly recommend it. Hard Mountain Clay, C.W. Blackwell. This one's actually signed and addressed to me. Right? So, I mean, I, I know you're jealous of it, but... That's life. All right, that's it, kids. We're done. We're going to wrap it up. Thanks so much for stopping by as usual. Really appreciate it. Until we meet again, stay safe. See you. Bye-bye now.